on here guys and today we're talking about the shark bite system this is not really a video that i wanted to make but i just really didn't see anyone else discussing uh, some of the issues surrounding the shark bite system now before we get started this is not going to be a video comparing the quality of shark bite versus dji more it's going to be a drone economic style video talking about what is going on with the system and something I don't hear a lot about, which is the failure rates. Um, so this was precipitated by Chad Shind, um, who I understand is one of the early shark bite testers, making this message posted to the, to the Fat Shark Facebook group. I apologize for announcing the shark bite firmware update. I was told Monday at the latest. Greg, the founder of Fat Shark, got pissy when he seen all the stuff in it. He said he who doesn't fly will have to test it and then asked when it was going to be available and was met with an expletive. He then asked why all the new stuff was in there, which I replied that the customers want those things. Bottom line, he doesn't care what the customer wants and was met with an expletive again. Josh Barbell's stream was right. Carl at David Math is a great guy that's working hard to improve the shark bite. I feel bad for Carl to have to deal with Greg. I worked hard on testing the firmware, borrowed goggles to do it, HDOs for free. I've answered many questions for a lot of people and have spent countless hours helping guys get their OSD set up and running along with other issues for free. I won't be doing any of this anymore. I'm the one who got the Whoop style single board in production and I've literally had to beg Greg to produce it. This guy is out of touch and an emotional nightmare to deal with. So I'm out and ordered my DJI system last night because Greg, founder of Fat Shark, said I really like mine. First of all, I want to address a few things with this message. So I agree with this post in some ways and I disagree in some other ways about how we went going about it. Um, working in technology for the past really long time, guys, I can tell you that it's not always the best idea to release all of the features at once. I know a lot of people are going to say, what are you talking about? So he's complaining that there's a lot of features that are available that are ready that have been worked on. Let's put them all in. And the owner of Fat Shark is saying, no, 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 let's not do that. I don't necessarily think that's a terrible idea, you know, because when you make a lot of changes at once, you can cause other issues. It's really better to do incremental changes three or four at a time, however much your development and testing team can accommodate. If you try to push 20 changes in a row, one of them might cause something to be broken and it's going to be that much longer that's going to take you to figure out and you could break other pieces of function out. Okay. The other thing that I'm going to address that I don't think is fair is the fact that um, Greg says he likes his DJI goggles. I don't think there's anything wrong with him flying DJI goggles. If you watch the Ford versus Ferrari movie, anytime you're competing with someone, do you think that the guys over at Ford didn't know what it was like to drive a Ferrari? I guarantee you they did. So there's nothing wrong with checking out the competition. But I will say that a lot of the uh, people that do have the system have, at least in my town, have been having issues. And I'm curious to know if you have the system and are having issues. Three of the people in my town that I know personally bought it. Two of them are racers. And the number of times I've been at an event where they were actually flying it, zero, zero guys. Um, the freestyle that bought it is also not flying it. Two of those guys had issues with the module itself, had to send it back. I understand at least one of them had to send it back a second time. Um, there's also been failures with the video transmitters themselves. Um, the other guy, now these are all experienced builders, right? They're not new people. Um, so that's worth noting too. The third person did not have failures, but said the range was unusable at our night racing spot. If you've seen some of the night racing vlogs, you know the spot I'm talking about. It does have a lot of reflections. DJI actually performs excellent there because it just eats up reflections and multi-pathing. Analog is still perfectly fine, even on 25 milliwatt, but uh, the shark bite just it wasn't working so everybody that bought shark bite in my town is back on analog and i think at least one or two of them are considering moving over to dji now this is not a dji versus fat shark video again um 
I really feel for Fat Shark um, coming out with this product at this time. I'm sure this is something that they had in the works since before DJI came out. And if DJI didn't exist, everyone would probably love this system. But now that DJI does exist, the, we're used to the higher levels of development. We're used to the higher levels of support and updates that come like the 50 megabyte one that came from DJI. We're used to um, greater levels of quality control. So people are not as forgiving with having failures in these video transmitters. You have to understand though that the cost of these have gone up. The SharkBite video transmitters are a lot more expensive than your average Rush or Unify. So those are all things people have to deal with. The other thing is I don't hear a lot of people actually racing with it. Now the DVR doesn't look that great um, compared to analog to my eyes, but what everyone says is that's the limitation of the Fat Shark system DVR. If you actually see it in the goggles, it looks much, much better. So let's just say that the image is perfectly fine and usable for the sake of this discussion. Now let's talk about the biggest indicator of success of a new technology is when the bind and fly manufacturers adopt it. Um, we, within a few months of DJI being released, started to see the first bind and fly models being produced. Now it seems like the majority of bind and flies um, from every company across the board, including the bespoke builders, are all heading to DJI. And we have yet to see any models being produced with the Shark Bite system. You might say that this is kind of like how some people say when a new video format comes out, the porn industry can indicate the winner, as crazy as that sounds. And which, you know, whenever we saw this with HD DVD versus Blu-ray, that happened to be the case. Whichever one they adopt was going to be the successor. And with Fat Shark being late to the party, and as of yet, several months after launch, having no bind and fly manufacturers adopt this system, can it be considered dead in the water? I see a lot of people that were big time supporters have gone quiet and a lot of people have become haters, but let's not become such strong Fat Shark haters. You gotta remember, Fat Shark carried this industry for many, many years. In fact, I'd say that there would not be a DJI system, there would not be a user base of FPV pilots as large as it is without Fat Shark. So we all owe you know, some bit of our hobby to Fat Shark, even if you've never owned a pair of Fat Shark goggles. I probably own like six different ones. Um, they have pushed this entire hobby forward. They had the best quality control of any product we ever used in the market for years. They had the best optics of any goggle in the market for years. They had the best form factor of any goggle still to this day. So it's easy to compare them now that there's something better on the market and say that they're junk. They're not junk. They got us to where we are today. Now, can they still survive comfortably as a number two manufacturer behind DJI? Because I don't think that there's any way that, that they can pass them. Um, but that doesn't mean that they can't exist and still move forward. What we would like to see is improvements to the reliability, to the updates, to some of the things that that poster was talking about to come out and make the system better. We want competition for DJI. We want it to be better. I want to see just as many racers on the Shark Bite system at my races as DJI. We have normally four to six people flying DJI at every race um, now. I mean, it's just that's just how it is. People are racing on it. Um, yes, you can't count it in official events as reliably, but it can be done. I flew the qualifier last year on it. Um, so what do you think, guys? Uh, please, please share your Shark Bite experiences down below. If you've had a failure with the module, if you had a failure with the VTX, if it's broken in a crash, some people are saying the two layer board is kind of naked. It's not robust enough to really handle hard crashes. Some people are saying the whoop layer board is not the style of mounting that we use in racing quads so it's a little awkward to mount what do you guys think i want to hear more nobody's discussing these type of failure rates so i just want to get the discussion started i don't have enough data to really say on the whole but i want to get that discussion started i'll be following this post up with a poll so people can let's all let fat shark know how grateful we are for all of the work and great products that they delivered to us for years and years i know this is a tough time when a bigger fish comes along 
jumps into their pond and all of a sudden it's like, man, how can I ever compete? I can't imagine the stress that those guys must be going through. And that yet during that time, they're still developing new technologies to make things better for us, to give us the best fat shark product that they possibly can. So let's show some patience to them. Let's show some support to them. Even if you've moved on and aren't flying fat sharks anymore, you still gotta have respect for the point that they got us where we are today. Not DJI. The only reason DJI exists is because of Fat Shark. Thanks, guys.